Hello everyone, this is Soy Yoshi back with more of Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2. We are starting with Spin Dig Galaxy today. So we have the info card here. Spin Dig Galaxy has three missions. We'll be doing Diggleg's Planet first. Only five planets and two mini planets. Difficulty, two out of five. It's not that bad. Enjoyability, two and a half out of five. It has its annoying places. Couple new enemies. And a new boss, too. So, here's the menu. We have 15 lives. Let's see how many are remaining at the end. And how many we lose because of some plant or some chomp. Fingers crossed. Yes. So this galaxy introduces a new power-up. The... Wait for it. Okay, so maybe I can't get up there without the drill. It's called a spin drill, but no one ever remembers that. This is actually probably my least favorite power-up in the game, though, because you can't get rid of it easily, and it keeps you from doing any kind of special jumping. The only jump you can do is a normal jump. You can't side somersault, long jump, far, far jump, no. Uh, back, backflip, you can't do that either. So, as useful as it can be, there are a lot of annoying parts to it too. And you can't just get rid of it, you have to get hit by an enemy. So, I don't really like that power very much. I miss the, uh... Ice Flower, which they didn't have in this game. And why do I keep, like, harassing these Lumas? I don't want to. I love how the black holes are just, like, right next to you, but they don't drag you in unless you come in, like, an inch off the edge. Luma, where are you? Thank you. Some of these Lumas are so slow. What a disappointment. Oh, I hate this level. Because I'm mean this planet, because stupid stuff like that always happens. Well, I think the... What? I think that the method of... That's another reason I hate the drill. It takes forever to pick up. But I don't think you should try backflipping onto the, uh... Top of the planet, because that has not worked well for me so far. So, in the... Off to the left, you could see the planet that we do in the next mission, but in this mission, we don't use that planet, we just go straight to the boss. And that Luma over there, if you have 30 star bits, you can buy a Life Shroom, I believe it's called, which you see, and it gives you six, six hit points instead of three. Or you can buy a 1-up, so it's useful, but I wasn't gonna buy one, because I couldn't afford one. And I hate this battle so much. Basically, he sends out those drill things whose name I can... Diggle legs! Those drill things whose names I can never remember, and they, like, murder you. And then it's annoying trying to get the power star. Or trying to hit his weak spot, which is, of course, where the power star is. Later, there's a daredevil... Ah, uh, A daredevil run of this level, which is also very annoying. Not the level, just the boss, though. That was lucky there, I didn't think I was gonna hit him. So, like, pretty much every boss in this game, if you hit him three times, you beat him. 
but there are only short intervals when you can actually hit it. Oh my gosh, I hate that drill so much right now. Yeah, I finally got smart and didn't get the drill. Oh my gosh, I can, I can so go forward. And there! Okay, I don't care if I only have one battery. Well, Mega Legs is done. I think it's safe to say that much. Yeah, this is part one of the only power-ups in the Mario series that I can think of, where you pick it up and use it, instead of be actually transforming Mario. The other one I can think of is the propeller block in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. But you can get the exact same effect with a helicopter mushroom. So, I wish there was a drill mushroom. That would be a lot more fun than having to pick up the drill or whatever. It's just so unwieldy. Hi, Lubba. And we brought back a Luma. Feller. He has an accent. And... Wow, Lumas can build ships, too. Well, of course they can build ships. They built this starship. What am I saying? The game has been saved. Star bits, if you go in that warp pad, then there's a one-up on the other end. This game really is generous with the number of one-ups it gives out. I was playing New Super Mario Bros. Wii the other day, and there were just so many one-ups. Like, I played through the first two worlds because I was considering it as a uh, let's play, though I ultimately decided on this. And I got to something like 60 lives at the end of World 2. It was ridiculous. They just, like, give you away the lives, basically. So, Silver Star's down deep. I believe that there are some cosmic clones in this level. Sort of annoying. Oh, uh, yep, if it says careful, you know they're gonna be cosmic. Oh yeah, doing this level, it reminded me, it reminded me though, this reminds me of, uh, the idea for the next major Super Mario, uh, 3D platformer slash collectathon. What I'm talking about is games like Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, both galaxies. The 3D games where you're collecting stars, and it's in an environment that usually doesn't progress completely linearly. Although, this game it does progress more or less linear, because most of the world is just a level where you have to get to the end, maybe fight a boss. That's one of the reasons I like Super Mario 64 and Sunshine maybe a little more than this game, because they aren't so linear. There are a lot of missions that you can do more or less in any order, and none of them involve just going through a level. They involve actually searching in a small environment, like in uh, Super Mario Sunshine, for example. The environment does change from level to level, but... Uh, the goal isn't just get to the end of the level, though. Like, the Great Watermelon. I can't remember the full name, but it's the one where you have to push a watermelon to the blender. Like, obviously, you can't do it until you unlock the 8th level in Gelato Beach, I think the world was. But, it's not linear, you know? You're trying to transport a watermelon, which is very difficult, different from just going through a beach level, and I think that's one of the things that I'd like to see in a Mario game, not just going straight through a level, but actually, like, 
exploring a world, sort of. So that's like the one reason that this probably wouldn't be my favorite game of all time. But it definitely made the list. It's a really fun game overall. Ah, Silver Star, thank you. Oh, but my idea, which I forgot about on my long tangent about Super Mario Sunshine slash 64, my idea was uh, the next game, because they can't make a Galaxy 3 really. Well, they could, it's just they've used so much of the theme up already, and a lot of, like, fans I know are even saying that they don't want a Galaxy 3, they want something different. So my idea was, uh, I obviously haven't worked out the whole way it works, but I was thinking of all the themes that the game has done, like Super Mario 64 was a castle, Super Mario Sunshine was an island, Super Mario Galaxy was of course space themed, and I was having trouble thinking of what they could use for their next theme, and then it came to me, Super Mario Terra. Now this is all just like in my head, and it'll probably never get used at all, but basically, okay, Bowser floods the earth or something like that, and Mario is forced to flee to these caves outside the princess's castle. There he learns that the caves are magical and with enough uh, gems, I guess I'll call them, then tunnels can uh, lead sorry tunnels can be created that leads to other parts of the world so at the beginning of the game oh yeah that's my bank toad there cuz on my other file I have all of those star bits but anyway back to my idea it could lead to uh, so at the beginning of the game it will all be cave like areas like the first three or four maybe, and then once the player gets enough gems, which are the equivalent of stars in that game, maybe they could, like, there could be different gems for completing different types of missions, like red for defeating a boss, blue for, um, a hidden, a hidden gem maybe, like, uh, for example, the one in Super Mario 64 where you fly through the five coin rings and get the five coins in the very first world. Maybe that would reward you with like a blue gem. Um, maybe a gem for helping out a character in that world. Like in this game where you help out the robots by bringing them Goombas and stuff as you'll see later. But anyway, different gems unlock different aspects of the cave. Ooh, nice combo I'm getting here. Ah, broken. Anyway. Different aspects of the cave. So, for example, uh... The one for defeating bosses, maybe, might unlock in the hub. Uh, the hub is just what you call, like, the main world. For those of you who don't know. Defeating the bosses might unlock... That might be what unlocks worlds further in. Then the ones... For, then the secret ones might unlock a potential to gain more gems in the hub. Like in Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, the ones you get for, like, cleaning off the bell towers, there were shine sprites. So if you get enough, uh, dang it! This is what happens when I talk and play. But if you get enough, uh, ge secret gems from secret levels, then you'll be able to get secret gems in the hub world as well. Then the gems that, uh, you get for completing the character's quests, might function in that the, that character moves to the caves with you, sort of like in this game, when the... 
Star Bunny moved in with us, that's what it was. After we beat Flip Swap Galaxy. And so it would be divided in caves that were maybe uh hmm bigger than the worlds in this game, but like what I mean by bigger is more space to find the stars and stuff. So like maybe a Super Mario Sunshine sized world. But Whoa. Smaller than like hmm. Dang it. I wasn't even talking there and I died. Smaller than like the whole Isle Delfino, but like the same but bigger than like uh Bigger than something like Flip Swap Galaxy in this world. Sorry, this is a bit confusing, I bet. But that's my idea. It's just something I came up with once. So, while I was talking, I obviously got into this world, which is like Right Side Down, I think it's called. Right Side Down Galaxy. The first gravity changing world. Uh, more or less straightforward. I like it okay. Oh, I forgot to say one thing about Super Mario Terra. I said that the first part of the game would be entirely in caves, but then after you got a certain number of the gems, You'd be able to travel to different parts of the world, like in, uh, like maybe a desert could be one of them, and they would be based out of these small cave, sort of, like there would be a cave at the very edge of that world, and then there would be the whole world, so it wouldn't just be caves for the whole game. But, I honestly really don't know what Nintendo will do for their next platformer, 3D platformer. They might go with Super Mario Galaxy 3, but something tells me they won't, so... I don't know, I'm curious. Well, obviously they did Super Mario 3D Land, but that doesn't count. Since that was like a, uh... That was a start-to-finish totally game. Oh, did I forget to inter introduce the fire flower? Nah, it doesn't matter. You guys all have... You guys all probably know what a fire flower does. Damn. Um... If I die here... I'm gonna be very annoyed. What?! I wasn't even touching it! I wasn't touching the surface! What? Stupid game. Urgh. Oh. Wow. Wow. Because in real life, if you get something pushes you and there's nothing below you, then you'll totally get crushed. Yeah, you won't get pushed down. Or in this case, since the gravity is reversed up. Uh, I personally don't bother getting the one up. I just spin once I'm on the section with the star. It makes it a lot easier to get the star. And wow, this, this episode's gone a long time. It really has. And the next episode will be up tomorrow. This is Soyoshi, signing off.